Welcome to The Advocate, where topical issues are discussed in a no holds barred manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. My advocacy today is on the clamors of separationists from different facets of the country and the arrest of its leaders. Peter is back after a while and is talking on issues of food security in the country. Kunle Lawal wants to explain to us what it means by a democratic coup. Sit back, the panelists are here to present your Sunday dose of provoking thoughts with no holds barred after this break. Sunday Boho, Unam Dikano, and the Separatist Movement. So, Chief Sunday Boho has been arrested. This makes it the second separatist leader to be arrested by this government. And this is bad. It is human rights violation. It discredits and disunites the already fragmented nation. As a people, we would not take this sitting down or standing, not even lying down. The Fulanese and their love for power, how can a Fulani man be arousing Igbos and Yorubas? Well, this is the narrative we're made to believe. But is this entirely true? I hear people say Sunday Bo's arrest would not have happened in a civilized nation. And I just did laugh. It'd be like say we never hear of Catalonia separatist movement before, Abi. Read about Carles Poigimont. Read about Charles Komi Kudoji and the Western Togoland battle in neighboring Ghana. Many elites and poorly informed middle class talk about Pakistan and India. We refer to the unbundling of USSR to justify our demand for Yoruba nation or Biafra. Have we ever taken time out to read about the journey of these secessionist movements? Do we know the struggle they went through? Is this what we want for Nigerians who are already stressed Killings, harassment, oppression, violation of human rights, etc. Secession movement is not easy. It never comes easy. Are we ready for this? If you are a secessionist leader and you have the perceived support of your people, be careful because no one really has your back. Like Nnamdi Kanu and Sunday Igboho, you'll be left to hang. Secession is not easy. And in Nigeria's case, is secession what we need? Well, we will discuss that on another day. But for now, let me ask you these questions. Have you heard of Hawaiian Sovereignty Advisory Commission? What about Larry Sisid Kilgo? This, the first, of course, is a commission established to achieve the secession plan of Hawaii. Larry Kilgo, formerly called, famously called Larry Sisid Kilgo, is one of the most popular faces currently fighting for the liberation of Texas from USA. Yes, Texas wants to secede from the USA. Texas is an oil producing state, a rich oil state unlike Niger Delta region, yet they want out of America. My point is this, it is not until you are oppressed that you have a right to demand for secession. You have a right to demand for secession wherever, but there are processes and procedures. The government should not oppress the people, and the people should not be seen as challenging the stability of the nation. The first thing is to have the buy-in of the entire region that you want to pull out of a union, a nation, in our case, Nigeria. You need to, the buy-in of power brokers of your region. Secession is an intellectual process, not a violent one. Violence makes it gory. Many needless lives are lost. I'm not justifying these brutal acts, but I'm saying it is a universal script that will play out in any country in the world, if approached the same way we are. For Nigeria to change, we need to understand the process and address each bit of it tactically, not emotionally. Emotions do not win cases. It empowers the politicians that we all have acts to grind with. It fractionalizes and weakens the masses. God bless Nigeria. Wow. You know, um, Kaode says something about processes and procedures. Um, intellectual processes, um, ideological procedures. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what is missing. We, I mean, the secessionists, like you said, 
they, 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 they approach this without any laid down processes. There are no procedures. And just before the, <clears throat> we, that we got on this um, program, you know, Kunle was asking something about, so you want to succeed. What's, your, what's the developmental plan for the new nation you want? And, you know, the moment he said that, I just said to myself, I think um, both the secessionists and their supporters are really not ready. Most of the time, it's, um, it's, it's greed. It's um, uh, personal vested interest, yes. you know, trying to play out. But mm -hmm. we define them, use this secession as a, a cover for it. I don't know about uh, Hawaii and the other ones yeah. you, you quoted, but honestly, this, this really calls for sober reflection. On well, um, I'm of the point of view that whenever this session is talk about dividing Nigeria, they divide Nigeria on a parameter that is permissible to them, exactly. but not permissible to the minority units also functioning within them. Mm. So I have the belief that if we divide Nigeria across the three major borders which we are thinking of, we still will have minority groups in the east, in the west, and in yes. the north yes. that will not agree with those compositions or units they are planning of to course. form. Of and one quick thing I always ask, I notice something common. Why is it whenever Easterners and North Westerners are referring to Northerners, they say Fulani? Fulani don't even make up to 40% of the entire population of the north. So I don't even understand what exactly when they talk about Fulani and power. I like the question part Mark he put at the end. Mm. Uh, now so we think. So really, now so we think. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, for me, when, when I was putting this piece together, I had to, it was a very lengthy one. I needed to remove so many things mm. just to summarize it. Because at the end of the day, you realize that, yes, I don't have any problem with anybody wanting out. And that's why I give examples of countries. People want out in different countries. In America, Texas, they have all the oil. They have everything. They are rich. They are very I mean, they have everything, yet they want out. But you see, there are processes. Anywhere you rise up against a government, mm. the government, you've given the government a reason to oppress you. And that is what, and no matter, no amount of emotion can stop that. Mm. If you call the UN, call anybody, listen, when the guys, when the, they, they organized a referendum in, in Catalonia, because they wanted, they wanted out, these were lawmakers. Spain, all that came from Spain, they chased after them. I think Carles or, or, or a few of them ran away to Belgium or Netherlands. An international warrant of arrest was issued and they went and brought them back. Mm. They were in prison, but they've been given a pardon, I think sometime in June, after two or three years. So, you see, it is a script that exists. And that's why as youth, as Nigerians, we need to understand these things. If really we want the change. And for me, the question I asked, which I really couldn't address was, is this secession we need? Mm. I would agree, and I always tell my friends that, okay, whether you're Yorubas or Igbos or Awusa, anybody that wants to succeed, you have a right to. But I will support you to succeed if you can prove to me that in your entire region, you are more developed than Nigeria. Mm. Then we all will agree that Nigeria is holding you back. Which, which region in Nigeria is developed? That's the first question. Is it the north? where we say they've been holding power for so long, the people are suffering. If you see, I see mm. some of these kidnap cases, you see model schools, and I wonder, this is a model school. Mm. And what is this? Is this the north where we say all the power and all the money is going to? Mm. In the south, we say we're educated, but we see our development, you're like, we could be better than this. In the east, we see a lot of our Igbo guys, they're making money, they're successful, but apart from the beautiful lush houses, how are roads? Mm. What's the health sector like? So it's not a session we need. We need to first of all get our people our leaders, regional leaders, to think and act on our behalf. Hmm. Then it will, it will be okay. And I think there's a part we seem to mostly forget. Hmm. Every country has a right to defend its sovereignty True. and its constitution. True. That is first and foremost mm -hmm. to any threat. True. So when you're going to start a secession, if you are not playing on the games or within the parameters of the National That's Assembly, exactly. you are not going to have any normal peaceful response right, exactly because what it is is that you're a threat to a nation yeah. mm. that's what it simply that, means. that's the very, processes very and true. procedures processes if you do it the wrong procedures. way i mean you'll be you'll be hacked down don't empower that's what i was talking about a play, mm. people that are already oppressed you know empower mm. who the authorities the oppressors. You, the oppressors. You cannot, you can't win this battle I, I anyway. Think, I think you're right. And like you right, rightly said, uh, emotions don't win cases. Mm -hmm. Very, 
very um, key phrase there. You know, Kunle, Kunle brought up something that I actually have been, I've always believed. So when you say you want to separate the East, you know, you talked about the three regional yeah. lines. They are no longer three. Mm. You know, I don't understand. Mm. You know, in those days, we used to say middle belt. Mm. Yes. You don't call a Delta man a middle belt again. South South has become a very strong force. Yes. You don't come <laughs> like that's, come that's true. South South to, that's true. to, to, to the East or East. Exactly. So I think the, 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 the line border lines have become polarized right now. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about East, East is not what it used to be 20 years ago. True. I don't know about the North. I don't know about, but I know the East. You can call it the the middle is there's no middle belt again. They've become a big true um uh, bold. They call themselves. Yeah. They've become so mighty. So They've mighty become power belt. brokers. They have become power brokers. Yes. So you can't call them middle belts. They are not the minority again. Mm. Mm. Well, we'll keep talking. Yeah. And uh, we pray that of course we uh we we, we ask for um, what's it called? That uh, the rights of those that have been arrested should not be trampled on. Absolutely. Fair, uh, uh, just uh, justice for them, and that is very key. Peter is next. He's giving us a lecture on food crisis in Nigeria.